Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sohini and I'm a pre-med student at UCLA. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I used three months of my summer last year to study for the MCAT start to finish. I know that for a lot of college students right now, summer has just started and everyone is in full grind mode right now. Trust me, I know how you feel. This time last summer, I was hunkered down in the library almost every single day. I'm actually gonna be doing a series of videos dedicated specifically to the MCAT and how I studied for it last summer. A huge part of this exam is knowing how to prepare your preparation. In my opinion, two of the biggest things you need to know to do well in the MCAT are what to study, and when to study it. This video is gonna be exactly how I studied for the MCAT in three months. I've broken this video up into smaller sections and I've linked the timestamps down below in the description box. So if you want to skip around, feel free to. Also stay tuned until the end of the video because I will be sharing a blank copy of my Excel spreadsheet that I use to study. So if you're looking for a template or some sort of guide to just get started on how you can schedule your own summer, I would definitely recommend checking that out. That's linked below too. Today we're going to be covering four questions. First, what should I use to study with? Two, how long should I study for? Three, how long should I study for each day? And four, how exactly should I schedule out my studying? So what should you use to study with? Number one, you need to have a solid set of review books. In my opinion, this might be your most important study tool other than the practice exams that you practice with. Having a solid set of review books gives you exactly the information that you need to know and honestly must know for the MCAT. I personally use the Kaplan brand, but you could use the Princeton Review, Exam Crackers, whatever other book you want to use. Number two, Jack Weston. Jack Weston is an online free resource. Jack Weston is a website where you can practice your CARS section. If you didn't know what CARS means, CARS stands for Critical Analysis Reading Section, and it's the second section in your MCAT, and it's the one that's the least science-based. And also, in my opinion, the one that's hardest to study for. For CARS, you can't necessarily memorize things and just do well. You have to understand the logic of the AAMC material and then be able to apply your critical thinking to it. Jack Weston is great because you can subscribe for free and then every single day a new daily passage will come out where you can practice your cars. Cars is one of those things that you just need a lot of practice with, especially if the SAT reading or the ACT reading section wasn't really your vibe. But the good thing is, all you need to do is just drill car sections over and over again and I promise you will get better. So Jack Weston is a great resource for that. Number three, Khan Academy. So I used Khan Academy personally to supplement the more difficult topics that I was learning or relearning with my Kaplan books. Khan Academy is great. It's also a free resource online accessible for anyone to use with internet. Khan Academy has an entire MCAT section dedicated to all the material that you might need to know or might encounter on the test. They also have videos and they have questions that you can review with after each section that you review. Last but not least, I would highly recommend you get the official AAMC practice material. I personally purchased the entire AAMC practice material bundle and I'll link that down below. I highly encourage you to purchase that entire bundle if you are able to do so because if you buy everything in bulk together, you will get a slightly lower price than if you pick and choose some of the materials but not others. The AAMC practice material includes section banks, question packs, and full and practice exams. There's also information about how the MCAT is tested and is graded, but I didn't really consider that part of my review material just because you can find that online anyway. So I wanna give you an example of how I utilize these resources day to day in my studying. First, I would start off every single review session with at least one passage from Jack Weston. CARS was a section that just didn't come as naturally to me as chemistry or physics, so I knew I had to practice it every single day in order to see real improvement. After Jack Weston, I would pull up the Kaplan chapters I had assigned myself to review that day. I would generally do about two to three chapters, maybe more if I was feeling it, but I would really only assign myself two or three each day. Even though I remembered most of the information from my pre-med classes in those Kaplan review books, I still made sure that I spent time reading every single chapter front to end, highlighting, taking notes if I didn't fully understand something, and I would review all of my knowledge with the practice questions at the end of each chapter. If I really struggled with something, I would go on to Khan Academy, watch a few videos on those difficult topics, and then I would drill more practice questions that are all available for free. This was especially helpful for me for physics, Physics was something that I 
just struggled with a lot at the beginning. There was just so many formulas for me to memorize and I kind of forgotten them from class to be honest. And MCAT is very application focused. So you just need to memorize the formulas and then apply it to the information they give it to you. Khan Academy was great for that. They would give me all of these practice questions and I just had to remember the formula and then apply it straight to the question. And nine times out of 10, I would get it correct. I do want to say that I'm going to be making a video on all of the resources I used for studying for the MCAT in depth in another video. So please, if you are interested in that, please subscribe and hit the like button below. So how long should you study for? The time it'll take for you to prepare for the MCAT basically comes down to three things. The amount of time you have until your test, the quality and breadth of your resources, and the confidence you have in your own abilities to succeed on this exam. Now, if you happen to be a super genius who remembers every single thing you learned from your pre-med classes, you might only need a few weeks to study for this test. Majority of people aren't gonna be in that boat though. I personally allocated 12 weeks or about three months to my dedicated study time. I knew that I had three months from the end of my spring quarter at UCLA last year to the beginning of my fall quarter this past academic year. I knew that summer was a time when I had a lot less distractions, I didn't have school, and I was fortunate enough to be able to take time off of work and my other responsibilities in order to dedicate most of my time to studying. I want to acknowledge that this is definitely not feasible for everybody, depending on your circumstances, and I want to emphasize that you can definitely still do well in the MCAT, even if your schedule looks different than mine. I just wanted to share my own journey, and hopefully it'll help you personalize your own schedule. I chose to study for the MCAT in the summer because I wanted to maximize the amount of time I had before my exam. I did this for two reasons. One, the longer I had to review all of this information, the better I could retain it. And two, if I did happen to fall behind a day or two, I could use those extra days to catch up, or if I was on schedule, I could use those days to hang out with friends and take some mental health breaks. Just know that if you do have less time than three months to study for the exam, plan on spending more time per day to still cover everything in detail. For the first two months of my dedicated study period, I didn't allow myself to be in the library for more than maximum of five hours a day. Most days, I would wake up around 8 a.m., eat breakfast, get ready for the day, drop my brother off to summer school, and then stroll into the library around 10 a.m. to start studying. After about two hours of uninterrupted studying, I would take a lunch break around 12 o'clock. I would watch a YouTube video or two, eat my lunch, do some stretches, walk around the library, get a little bit of a break. And then I would go right back into it for another two hours, finish all my tasks for the day, and I would end up leaving the library around 2 p.m. each day. This gave me pretty much all of my afternoons and evenings free for those first two months so that I could focus on anything else that I wanted to during that time. Do keep in mind that this was a solid four hours of uninterrupted studying. I would turn my phone off, I wouldn't check messages, I wouldn't be on social media during this time. I want to emphasize that the MCAT is a test of endurance. You need to be able to train yourself from day one to be okay and be comfortable not being on your phone, not being distracted for hours on end because the the real exam is going to take at least six to seven hours, depending on when you're taking it. Think of this time as a training period. I almost like to think of it as a marathon, even though I hate running. <laughs> if you know that the end goal is an exam that's going to take seven hours of you sitting down and concentrating, you need to start doing that right from the get-go. The last thing that I want to note is that I gave myself a little bit of leeway with these eight weeks that I gave myself. In fact, I actually finished all of my review in about seven weeks because I added on a few extra chapters because I had some extra time, I felt like it, and I wanted to knock out some extra chapters if I could. This gave me an extra week right at the end of my two months of studying to go and take a week-long vacation with my family in Hawaii. Honestly, it was super needed, and I really am grateful that I had a little bit of a break before I went right back into doing practice exams almost every single day. My third month of studying was basically all practice exams. At that point, I was done with content review. I knew everything that I needed to in those books and I knew it well. Now, it was time for me to apply my knowledge into the AAMC logic of the exam. Every other day or so, I would have my mom drop me at the community college that was open at 8 a.m. every single day. Because I knew my test would start around 8 a.m., I wanted to practice my tests around 8 a.m. And I would spend one whole day taking the exam, pretty much simulating all test conditions, and then the next day, I would spend the entire day reviewing every single question. Not just the ones I got wrong, every single question. At the end of all of this, it basically boils down to a two to one ratio. For me, 
two months of content review in depth, in detail, to one month of really, really focused practice exam material was what I needed to score well on the MCAT. Four, how should you set up your schedule? As I mentioned before, this might look different for everybody. I'm a morning person, so I knew that I wanted to finish the brunt of my studying earlier in the day rather than later. If you're a night owl, you can totally flip this around. If you have work, if you have other responsibilities that take up parts of your day, you can definitely schedule this around what you need personally. At this point, I would recommend you go down to the description box and open up the Excel spreadsheet that I'm about to show you on this video. So as you can see, the very first day of my dedicated study period, I actually took the AAMC sample test included in that practice bundle. This was so difficult, <laughs> so difficult. But I encourage everyone to try one practice exam as early as possible in your studying. I struggled through that sample test. And at the end of it, I had finished maybe half the questions in each section. I had no idea what was happening. And I didn't even know what they were talking about in half these passages. Looking back in hindsight, this was the best decision I probably made in my study schedule. I knew from day one, I could not be complacent in my studying. From day one, I knew how intense and how stressful that exam was. It was eight hours long. I sat there the entire time, no phone, just one lunch break, nothing. And <laughs> it was rough. It was real rough. But I knew that that's what I had to work up to because in three months, I would have no excuse not to know that it was like that. I would highly recommend you attempt a practice exam earlier in your studying rather than later. You will know right away the intensity of the exam and what you need to personally do to meet that intensity. For the sample test, AAMC actually doesn't give you a scaled score. So what you have to do is use a score converter to get the score you would probably get on the real exam if you were to take the sample test as your real exam. In the Excel sheet, I've also linked a sample test score converter. All you do is you take the raw number of questions you got correct, input them in for each section, and they'll give you the scaled score at the end. The very next day, I actually went back through that sample test and I reviewed all of my answers. This actually ended up taking me almost a day and a half to do just because I was, again, overwhelmed by the sample test and just the entire everything about the MCAT. When I say that I reviewed all of my answers, I mean I reviewed every single question, not just the ones that I got wrong. Even the ones that I got right, sometimes I got right because I guessed or because I misunderstood something and somehow just got lucky. By reviewing every single answer and writing down what I missed and what I can learn from it, I was learning from the get-go all of the information that I needed to know. From there, you can see that I broke up my months into the different colors for each month. And those first two months I spent with mostly content review. I tried to pick two or three chapters each day from the Kaplan books to do. And I would try to do biology, psychology, chemistry, physics, all these different subjects each day. You can also see in my schedule that I kind of flipped around the numbers a little bit. What I realized was that some of the books like the biology and psychology sections, the beginning chapters are pretty much exactly the same in content. And so I didn't want to spend my first week just learning the same stuff over and over again. Rather, if I knew that something was being repeated in another section, in another book, I would try and schedule that much later. Spaced repetition, baby. As you can also see, I blocked out about one day per week in gray that I didn't use to actively study. When I say actively study, I mean that I still was reviewing. I just wasn't going to the library and I wasn't doing full grind mode, no phone, reading through all my notes. So I used some of these gray boxes to celebrate my mom's birthday, my birthday, and then later on, I actually had to drive up to UCLA once a week to keep my job, and I used that day to work. A little tip that I wanna share with you is that if you have other commitments you need to schedule your studying around, you can still passively study during this time. What I did on my drives up and down from UCLA, I had about an hour each way, and so I would go listen to the MCAT Basics podcast on Spotify and just review topics that I needed to learn a little bit more about. This way, I didn't feel like I was wasting my time driving up and down to work. I was still in the car, still listening to my information and reviewing it in a different way than I had previously. I also listened to the psychology and sociology Khan Academy YouTube playlists on the way, just with the audio, and I would also be reinforcing those definitions as I drove up and down to work. This last month, after I took that one week vacation, is when I ramped everything up to the max. I basically planned to take a full length practice exam about every other day or so. 
This is because I needed to be sure that when I got to the actual exam, I wasn't scared. I knew that if I had done this 10 times beforehand, I would be prepared walking into exam day. I started off with the three Kaplan online tests that came with my review book bundle. These were okay. I don't think you're missing out much if you're not able to do those. They're much more content-based than the actual MCAT. And so I used it more to practice my timing for the exam and more to just make sure that I knew the content that I had reviewed for two months was in my brain. However, if you do take these Kaplan practice tests or any third party tests in general, I wouldn't worry too much if your scores are lower than you expected. I was pretty shocked to see how low my score was. Know that the third party tests intentionally scale down your score so that you kind of freak out and purchase more of their stuff. Don't do that. And the AAMC actual MCAT is much more based on the passages they give you and less on random recall of facts. Once I started taking the actual official AAMC practice tests, my score went up dramatically. So don't worry too much about it, okay? This is also another reason why I recommend saving those official AAMC practice exams until the end of your studying. You don't wanna waste those valuable resources too early on. That's why I suggest you take the sample test right in the beginning and save your four practice exams for the future. I'm gonna be doing a video in the future about how I reviewed my exams. So if you do wanna see that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more videos in the future. You can see here, that I have some tests labeled custom exams. These are not really practice exams so much as exam length practice. Basically what I did was I kind of combined all of the question packs and section banks into this conglomerate practice exam style practice exam. This wasn't really supposed to emulate the actual MCAT, but rather give me an idea of about how many questions I was able to answer in a certain time period and still review those AAMC style questions from the actual official practice exam material. I have to acknowledge that this was not my idea. I actually got this idea from the Medbros channel and the Car Beauty channel. There are two channels. They basically explain how they created these custom tests. So I just took the idea from there. I'll link that video down in the description box too. But if you're interested in also watching me make a video on that, let me know and maybe I'll consider that one in the future too. That I actually chose to retake my sample test that I had taken day one. And I did this because at that point, I kind of needed a confidence boost. I wanted to make sure that I had seen real improvement. And even though when I took that sample test for the second time and I kind of remembered a few things here and there, I knew that all of my studying had paid off because I understood the AAMC logic and I understood how to get to the right answer in the right amount of time. Those last few days right before my test, I didn't stress out too much and I gave myself a little bit of a break. At that point, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to teach myself anything new. Instead, I wanted to relax and give myself the least amount of stress as possible. I used one of those days to actually drive up to the testing center and scope out the area a little bit before I actually went on my exam day. I would highly recommend you do this if you're able to. It calmed a lot of my nerves and my fears about just like getting super lost and never finding the place on exam day. And once you take your exam, three months in, give yourself the day off afterwards. I think I took like two weeks off and I just like was an actual potato. I was just an actual potato in my room and all I did was eat, sleep and watch Netflix. You deserve it, trust me. I wanna emphasize that I know a lot of people right now are starting out studying for the MCAT, this behemoth, this massive beast of an exam. And I wanna tell you that you will definitely be able to do it. I was so incredibly scared when I started out this process all by myself. And this is why I'm trying to make this YouTube channel to make all of this information a lot easier to access. I don't want all of you to have to go through what I did, scrolling through Student Doctor Network and the pre-med Reddit and trying to compile all this information just so I could do well in this exam. I'm trying to make as many videos as I can to try and make this process as easy as possible. And just know that you have me in your corner and I'm rooting for you. If you have any other questions about how I chose to schedule my MCAT in these Excel sheets, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer as fast as possible. Okay, so that's it for this video, everyone. If you found this video useful at all in any way, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It works in mysterious ways. I'm a new small creator and I'm trying to get my platform to reach more people. If you do that, it would help me out a lot. If you like this video and you want to see more videos from me, also hit the subscribe button and you'll see more videos from me in the future. Sending love everyone, bye.